This particular video is looking at uh, Unit 1.2, is a history of economic thought. Um, it's probably going to be a, a video that you return to over the course of the two years because at present, um, maybe some of this doesn't really have a context and so you might not be able to really sort of understand exactly how it fits into uh, the economics that you're going to be learning. Um, but as an overview, uh, history of economic thought is really sort of important that you understand how economics has developed over time. The starting point is generally this guy, Adam Smith, and Adam Smith is sort of credited with being the sort of grandfather of free market um, capitalist style economics. He wrote The Wealth of Nations in 1776, and a lot of the unit that we're going to do, Unit 2, Supply and Demand, um, and what's called the classical theory of macroeconomics stems from the work of Adam Smith and other uh, classical economists, the free market economists, if you like. Um, so classical economics is the name, the phrase that's often associated with the work of the free market Adam Smith um, type uh, economics. You might also see it referred to as neoclassical or new classical economics. It's all the same thing, essentially. So it works around the importance of competition and the free market, perfectly competitive markets, uh, both in a micro and a macro sense, uh, leading to very little government intervention. The economy essentially self-regulates. It looks after itself. There's not much for economists to do. Um, other classical economists of the day, uh, Jean-Baptiste Say, David Ricardo, Malthus and John Stuart Mill, a uh, utilitarianist um, pursuit of happiness uh, philosopher that you may well have heard of. Um, we also just touch upon uh, the work of Karl Marx, and you, know, you may be familiar with the name and uh, the fact that Karl Marx is sort of understood to be, if you like, the, 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 the godfather of communism. So the polar opposite, perhaps, to um, Adam Smith and capitalist free market approach. So he sort of had a view of the world in which um, workers were essentially creating surplus value in the goods that they produce, but uh, they didn't receive the full proceeds of their work. Uh, the capitalist did. And essentially there was a sort of considered to be an unfairness about this. And sooner or later, Karl Marx argued that uh, capitalism had sort of sown the seeds of its own destruction and would eventually, sh there would be a shift in power towards a more uh, socialist or, or communist state. Um, moving into sort of the realms of macroeconomics, uh, we come across uh, John Maynard Keynes, who is going to be very important to us in Unit 3. Um, he, in the 1920s, 1930s, uh, established what is now recognised as being sort of Keynesian macroeconomics, with a focus really on the aggregate demand or the total demand in the economy. And for him, um, governments played a really essential role in managing that macro economy in order to achieve economic growth, you know, low inflation and other measures of success uh, that we might see in a macro economy. Most famous quote from John Maynard Keynes though, is, in the long run, we are all dead. And that for sure will make more sense to you once you move into uh, unit three. Going back into Unit 2, actually, now there's a uh, sort of newish movement in economics in the last 20 odd years, which is to start talking about behavioural uh, economics, um, uh, who are quite different to the sort of classical view. I remember the classical view is a very free market, the idea that people pursue their own personal interest, but actually that rational decision making that consumers make leads to a common good is a classical free market view. Uh, behavioural economists don't subscribe to that sort of rational view. They don't believe that people behave in that sort of rational way. And they came up with the term um, nudge economics, like people need to be nudged in the right direction. And governments can play an important part 
in nudging people to do the right thing. Uh, we may have seen a little bit of that during this COVID crisis where governments were um, not trying to sort of impose too many punitive measures on us, like rules and regulations, like you have to do this, but they would just nudge us to do the right thing in terms of t having vaccines, making it very easy to book a vaccine, making them readily available, encouraging us in other ways to, to do that. Uh, so there's the whole debate about how rational people are in making their every, everyday economic decisions. And you'll sort of talk about that a little bit more in unit two. And then finally, we just move into where we are today, much more increasingly, we're moving into a view of sustainability. Uh, the, the old traditional economy on the left-hand side there, take, make, use, dispose, pollute, uh, is very much uh, a thing of the past, or we're moving towards it being a thing of the past, and we're shifting towards what we call circular economy or as a new another term is a donut economics where um, we try and make sure that uh, things are recycled and reused and there is a sustainability about what we do and you'll come across this term the donut uh, that tries to bring together both the sort of social needs of people in terms of water and housing and uh, you know society in general income work but making sure that it works in harmony with uh, the ecological needs and the limits to which we as a planet can actually sustain increased growth and uh, development and the they have more and more and more in terms of consumer goods there has to be a limit there somewhere the donut sort of looks at, looks at that approach